All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about roofs. We're gonna be talking about what is required in the Australian Building Code for ventilation. And we're gonna talk about some of the awesome products from Proctor on how we can get ventilation right in our roofs. Let's talk about first the most conventional roof type and insulation location, which is insulation on the ceiling. Yep. What products have we got here? And what are the benefits of some of these products? What you really need to make sure you've got is um, an air intake yep. at the lower level of the roof, which yep. is where we have, uh, it's called the FV10 yep. over fascia vent. And that just screws down into the top of the fascia vent quite simply. That is your air intake yep. under your sarcin membrane yep. and into the roof space above your insulation. insulation. You also need to make sure that you have exhaust at the high level. So what we have is called the RV10 bridge vent, which um, allows the air to flow up under the sarkin still mm -hmm. and all the way out and exhausts out under your ridge cap. Yep. As well as that, what you need to make sure you have is at least a 20 millimeter airspace. Now in this scenario, we, we know we've already got that in yep. here with the gap between the batten and the insulation being down. So the low. insulation is not allowed to go anywhere in contact with the underside of the sarcasm. That's right, yes. Yeah. Yep. So, so that has to be down to here. Yep. And th so this is why a lot of roofs as well also go towards the energy heel to try and lift up that roof from the ceiling to try and just get that yep. extra space, especially around the perimeter, right? Yeah, well, that's potentially one of the problems. The thicker the insulation has to be, you can potentially close off the ventilation yeah. gap there. Yeah. So what you might need is some kind of void former that just prevents that from closing off the gap. Now, it's not shown here, but we do have an eaves baffle, uh, which is a corrugated sheet that you can stretch over oh, yeah. the rafters. Yep. And that just ensures that even when the insulation's pushed right into the eaves, you will still get airflow over it okay. and into the roof space. Okay. Now, can we also talk, you've also got a little batten here just above. Yes. What's a key issue that we're trying to solve with that? So that's the so that's just VB10 drainage batten. Yep. Now, what that is for is when you have a metal roof, it is quite susceptible to condensation dripping from the underside. So what you really want is to separate it from the sarkin mm -hmm. so that when the condensation forms, it can drip down onto it. And with the drainage batten being kind of hollow, yes. then that allows the moisture to drain down exactly. all the way into the gutter okay. without becoming trapped in the roof space. The other issue with this roofing, because I mean, it will also allow airflow, but it's also going to be in contact with the paper. Yes. So if you don't have this there, yes. and this is in direct contact, yes. what you will find is at the, is at the bottom of the corrugation, yes. the condensation will actually transfer to the underside of the sarkin. Wow. And that can still get into the roof space. Yep. So that's more on extremely cold nights where you've got potentially also high humidity inside the roof as well. Uh, yeah, that, that would be the kind of primary time that yep. it would be a concern. But if it can happen, it will happen. Yes, Like it anything will. in life, yep. right? Yeah, yeah. And then at the top of the roof here, we've got this detail that you've got here with a, a product that allows the airflow. Now this is convection, right? Because we've got a low level introduction of air. There's gonna be hot air building up here, especially during the day, which heats up the air in there. Stack effect, it's just pushing all the air up and then out. Yeah, that's exactly it. So you get a natural kind of pressure difference from the low level up to the high level, yep. which allows for that passive airflow all, yep. all the way up the roof space. And as you said, the temperature kind of uh, helps to push that as well because you've got that pressure difference. Correct. Yep. And you're going to get that airflow on both sides of the paper, basically. You will, yeah. yes, ab absolutely. Um, which is why uh, we do split the sarkin at the top of the roof, just to make sure that the air can actually get up because these yes. membranes are very airtight. They are. So they do have to be cut there. So you've got a gap that it can get up and in through the ridge vent. And it's the same here, you know, yeah. you will get that air movement up through the drainage patterns. Now, just to reinforce that, these are airtight, but they're not a vapor barrier like foils. That, exactly yeah, right. Which yeah. is what so, we used to do, which yes. is wrong, wrong, wrong. Yep, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, these are vapor permeable, so moisture can still pass through the material itself. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, airtight doesn't necessarily mean vapor tight. Correct. It is designed to be vapor permeable. Yes. Now, what we always promote is that it's class four vapor permeable, which is the minimum you need to comply with the building code for yep. the colder climate zones or yep. states. The best thing is to have it as vapor permeable as yep. possible. Yeah. So can you briefly explain in layman's terms how this vapor permeability actually works? Yeah, absolutely. Nice. So what you get is a lot of warm, moist air 
inside the house that yes. permeates through and into the roof space where yes. it will cool down when it passes through the insulation. Yep. So when it cools down, that's when it's susceptible to condensation. So this is extremely uh, pertinent for homes that aren't ducting exhaust systems from bathrooms and kitchens directly to the outside. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Which is yeah. a huge real no-no, isn't it? Yeah, Especially yeah, in new construction. Yeah. In fact, in the NCC now, you have to duct everything directly to the outside. Yes, so previously you could duct it to the inside. Um, so there will be some older homes that do have that. Mm -hmm. And they are severe problems when it comes to, to moisture uh, in, in the roof space. So absolutely ventilating it and allowing that permeability so that all the vapor can pass through here. And once it passes through, it might still condense under the metal, right? but you've got that barrier there because it yep. only allows vapor through. It doesn't allow liquid water to pass through. Yeah. So how does that process work though with this material? Do you, can you explain uh, Yeah, that? so I mean you can- Because a lot of people will ask this question yeah, right, yeah, out there. Yeah. How can something be airtight but still allow yeah. moisture in, in the air to pass through yeah. it? So, I mean, you can almost think of it like uh, like a filter. Yes. So the air molecules are much larger than the vapor molecules. Yep. So it can prevent the air almost like a, a really tight uh, mesh, yes. stops the air from passing through. Okay. But it's still wide enough that the vapor is able to pass through. In some circumstances, actually in a very large amount of circumstances, people have tiled roofs and not metal deck roofs. Yep. That's right. So you will actually find that in a lot of tile roofs, they don't actually have any sarking. Now, if you're following the Australian building code, yeah. tile roof with no sarking yes. doesn't actually have to be ventilated. Right. Uh, the idea being that it is apparently permeable enough yeah. that it allows the, the moisture out in a more kind of natural way. And it's also a lot leakier. It is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, yeah. I mean, one of the clear disadvantages of not having a sarking underneath the tiled roof is that usually you've got to repoint them. What is it, every every seven years? Eventually tiled roofs will move, move around and then they'll leak. Yeah. Well, so that, that, when it leaks, you're going to get water dropping in into your home. You won't know about it for ages yeah. and you could potentially can get water damage. So if you've got a, some, a level of sarking yep. that's uh, been installed well, it can potentially just handle that that runoff. Yeah, yeah you're, you're exactly right. The risk is always, you know, you get a broken tile um, or you get kind of gaps in it from any sort of movement, then yep. that water's going to come in and you have no secondary protection underneath yes. it. That's yep. just going to come straight down onto the insulation, onto the ceiling, which is, you know, bad news for everyone. Mm. So the, the ideal scenario is, you know, what I would say is best practice would be to have a sarkin membrane in there, regardless of what the building code is, is right. saying. So would you still go for the ventilation on top of the fascia here? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So these uh, fascia vents um, that we have were actually designed originally for a uh, tiled roof. Oh, wow. So uh, yeah, absolutely. The only thing to consider is in a tile roof, your sarkin is more likely to be directly onto the rafters. Ah, yeah. So you don't have as much height over the uh, fascia vent yeah. to, okay. to lap it over. Right. So depending on the roof pitch, if it's if it's quite steep, then yep. you'll you'll be okay and it'll yep. just run right over, no okay. problem at all. Okay. If it's shallower, yeah. then you might also want to use some kind of anti-ponding board, just like a strip, maybe a hundred millimeters up from the fascia. And then obviously the ridge vent, there might be some products to do that with the tiled roof, but otherwise you have to go to a whirly bird. Yes, the way things are at the moment, there are uh, dry ridge vent products that exist, but very uncommon for roofers to use in Australia. Maybe that no one uses them at all. So it's not something that's readily available. Yeah. Our ridge vent, the RV10, is designed only for metal roofs, yep. un unfortunately. So maybe, you know, the whirly birds for now is yep. kind of the way you have to go. But I mean, predominantly, you're, you're going to be putting in this detail wrap with the gap for two different reasons with a metal deck roof and a, a concrete tile roof. Because I mean, these roofs are less likely to leak and move over time, but you have to deal with the issues of condensation forming on metal deck roofs because of how conductive they are. Yes, yeah. Very con conductive, virtually impermeable to moisture, yes. which is exactly why that moisture can't get out naturally. Yep. With tiles, it is a lower risk because a lot of them are very permeable like your typical concrete tiles. Um, they will also, the concrete tiles will also absorb a lot of the moisture, which means, you know, the, the problems aren't quite the same as with a metal roof. But as I said, best practice, you still want to have something as a secondary protection, protection even if you're not necessarily um, trying to ventilate the whole roof space. 
All right, let's move on to a, a less pitched roof detail or raked roof detail. Yep. And then we'll move on to what's required for NCC out of all yep. of this. Mm -hmm. All right, Paul, so yeah, let's talk through this. So insulation is now in line with the roof rather than on top of a ceiling. Yep. Let's talk through this detailing. Sure. Yeah, so it's a, a little bit of a different um, scenario um, when you've got the insulation up in the in the raft of space. Yes. Now, one, one of the big problems is that the insulation closes off that ventilation gap that you naturally get with, with the other roof type. Yep. So what we have to do, um, just to make sure you have that minimum 20 millimetres that's required in, in the building code, mm -hmm. is we have a 20 millimetre vent batten, which is essentially exactly the same as the drainage batten, just yep. 20 millimetres deeper. Because it's on top of the roof batten yes. even if you come in with the insulation and push it hard up against the battens yep. you still have that continuous 20 millimeters yeah, all the nice. way up to the top um, the other thing as well is because that volume of roof space is so much shallower yes. than an insulated ceiling you still have the same amount of moisture to deal with but you do need a greater amount of airflow because the volume of air space that you're ventilating is so much smaller yeah than you know, an entire roof space when you have an insulated ceiling. Yep. So for that, what we have is the FV25, which is essentially yep. just a larger version yep. of the FV10. So this is designed to give you the minimum required airflow into the roof space. So what you have is the air gets in up through here mm -hmm. and it runs all the way under the top of the, yep. uh, the underside of the sarkin yep. and out the ridge vent as normal. So just a nice uh, kind of simple solution to make sure you've always got that air gap. One thing some people might consider doing is, you know, if you've got like a 140, 150 deep rafter, yep. you might only be putting 100 millimetres of insulation in there. Yeah. Technically, you would have a deep enough air gap yep. to do it without this. Yep. But as I was saying, when the installer comes in with the insulation, we will tend to push it all the way up. It's better to make sure you've got a guaranteed airspace than rely on exactly where you're placing the insulation. Yeah, gotcha. So Paul, let's talk about now what is required for the Australian Building Code uh, NCC requirements. We've spoken about what your systems are and you know, I think they make complete sense. So, I mean, it is important to note that um, these requirements currently are only required in specific climate zones. Yeah, which That's, climate zones? Are uh, six, seven, and eight, which covers most of Victoria, a large chunk of New South Wales, some of South Australia, and, and Western Australia, and all of Tasmania. They might expand into further climate zones as well, so it's just worth keeping keeping sure. that in mind. So the absolute minimum requirements in the NCC is that you have to have a certain amount of airflow coming in at yep. the low level, and a certain amount of airflow coming out at the high level, as well as having a minimum of a 20, mil 20 millimeter airspace. So it's not quite as simple as just yeah. choosing two single products yeah. to achieve that because yeah. it's also dependent on the roof pitch. Yes. So anything that's considered a traditional pitch roof, which yeah. would be anything over 15 degrees, all you would require in this scenario with um, an insulated ceiling is your over face event there, and your ridge vent at the top, your air in and your air out. In the lower pitch roofs, just the same as the insulated rafters, you need yeah. a larger amount of airflow. Yeah. So between 10 and 15 degrees, okay. you would have to upgrade okay. to the larger opening here, but you would still use the okay. ridge vent. So basically on this side, you just spoke about it, it's just everything below the wrap. Yes. Everything below the wrap here. And then, and then straight up into here. This is additional to stop conduction and to give you another little air gap on top of the wrap, which is really useful actually because you get another little air gap here to shield you from high, high yep. like high temperatures that might be on the outside of the roof. Yeah. And the, and the same goes on this side. Everything below the wrap. So this fascia vent and the wrap itself, uh, vapor permeable. Uh, not, not, not the ventilation on top of the wrap, but everything below. And if you don't get a actual ridge vent, you can also do it with a whirly bird. But we're, we're not huge proponents of whirly birds; they just don't move enough air. With this sort of ventilation, it's just a big linear ventilation 
which just adds up to be so much more effective, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it really does. Yeah. Yep. So it, it's really simple because you just install it continuously and you know that you're getting that consistent airflow up the whole roof with maybe some other alternatives like a whirly bird where it's just at certain spacings, you could get some dead spots. Now, I guess if it's designed properly, then it, that should be avoided, but it's still always a, a potential risk.